There's a war going on right now. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is reinforcing U.S. support for Israel after today's attack by Hamas in Gaza that has left, uh, that has killed at least 70 Israelis so far and wounded uh, some 985 other Israelis who are being hospitalized. Secretary Austin met with top U.S. military officials just a little while ago, including the commander of the U.S. military's Central Command. Let's get more uh, on what's going on right now. We, retired Colonel Cedric Layton is joining us. Uh, he's a retired U.S. Air Force colonel. He's a CNN military analyst. And CNN Global Affairs analyst Kimberly Dozier is with us as well. Colonel Layton, what do you think the U.S. is doing right now to help Israel? Because from the president on down, there have been very strong statements of support for Israel in this war with Hamas. Well, in concrete terms, Wolf, I, we will speculate a little bit here, but the basic things that we end up doing are logistical support if the Israelis need it. Uh, sometimes there'll be intelligence sharing that will take place. And anything that the Israelis will need in terms of uh, even diplomatic efforts that might be ongoing, say, with the Egyptians or some of the Gulf states. So a lot of these issues will take place. Ready to have to perhaps help with the logistics aspects of this, and they will be moving things in, perhaps, to areas near Israel in case the Israelis need to have their stockpiles replenished. Uh, Kimberly, uh, an Israeli IDF military spokesperson uh, told me a little while ago that fighting is ongoing right now, still ongoing in more than 20 different locations. Special forces have been mobilized as Israeli civilians are being held hostage as well. That's what he says. Uh, just how complicated is this response uh, from the Israeli military? Complicated, and it could potentially stretch out for days, if not weeks. Once you have a hostage situation where militants are barricaded with Israeli citizens, civilians, not just some of the troops that have reportedly been uh, taken, it becomes very difficult for the Israeli Defense Forces. They've got to move slowly um, and precisely. They're already facing a massive blowback of anger from the Israeli people for missing this and for not responding quickly enough to the attacks in the South. That's what I was hearing from some former Israeli and U.S. officials, that it's not just uh, bad that they've, um, bad leveling, of, you know, almost horrific that they missed signs of this potential complex attack, but that when it started happening, they didn't respond fast enough to catch the militants faster and to keep them from infiltrating some of these communities. I think that's why you've seen um, the uh, Israeli prime minister call up more reservists because they're going to have to do something pretty dramatic to respond to this and to find all the conspirators and how this was plotted and carried out. And that likely means a ground incursion into Gaza. That means bringing a lot of active duty forces to that theater to attack there, which means they'll need reservist troops to backfill them and keep the rest of the country secure. They certainly will. Uh, Colonel Layton, uh, Israel formally is saying that the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, is preparing for a ground incursion into Gaza and that, quote, all options are on the table. So give us a sense what that looks like. So the most likely scenario, Wolf, just like Kimberly mentioned, is a ground incursion into Gaza. Uh, that's going to be a really, really tough thing for the Israelis to do. They have done it before, uh, but this is urban warfare. And uh, Gaza is uh, the most crowded place, I think, now on the face of the earth in terms of density of population per square mile. And given that fact, there are a lot of different things that they'll have to consider. Uh, they want to go after the military targets, in essence, the Hamas targets. Uh, but there are going to be situations where there will probably be collateral damage, in other words, civilian casualties. And that's going to make it really tough on the Israelis, uh, not only from a military standpoint, but also from an op uh, from a, a public relations standpoint. Uh, the other thing, of course, that they're going to do is they're going to use air power to go after these areas. Uh, th there's already been some of that uh, that we've seen around Gaza, but uh, I think the bombing attacks are going to be more intense, and they're also going to try to cut off any more Hamas fighters from coming into Israel itself. So that, I think, is what things will look like, at least for the next 24 or so hours. 
And Kimberly, what is Israel watching right now when it comes first to the West Bank and then up north, the border with Lebanon? Well, they're watching for basically all their other opponents um, for two things, any attacks from Iranian allies um, in the so-called Ring of Fire, which is how Israel describes the enemies that ring it, um, Hezbollah um, in southern Lebanon and the militants in Syria, both of whom have stockpiled rockets, missiles, the Hezbollah missiles um, are said to be more than 100,000 and they can reach most of Israel. Um, also, they'll be watching, the Israeli Defense Forces will be watching for this attack to spark some sort of popular revolt inside the West Bank. In the last two uprisings, the last two intifadas, the one in the late 80s and then uh, the one in the 90s, uh, the first one got sparked from a car accident. Two uh, truckloads of Palestinian workers were hit many killed, and that sparked off the popular protests that then militants took advantage of. Um, in this case, they're likely, they're trying to do it the other way around. They're staging a big, splashy attack and calling on others to pick up weapons and attack Israelis wherever they are. Uh, the second intifada started after um, Ariel Sharon, the uh, Israeli leader, then visited the Al-Aqsa Mosque on what Jews call the Temple Mount, a, a sacred area to Jews and Muslims um, in the old city. Uh, the Hamas military leader did say that this latest attack was um, partly because of recent incursions by Israeli ultranationalists into the mosque part of this sacred area, which has made major headlines across the Arab world, though uh, it hasn't been covered much in the West. So from their perspective, they had cause, and they're hoping other Palestinians, ordinary people, will pick up that uh, cause and attack. Kimberly Dozier and Colonel Cedric Layton, guys, thank you very, very much.